This is Signal Hounds talking RF, and today we're talking about the BB60D. This latest edition of the BB60 series gives Signal Hound customers more of what they asked for increased power and performance. Signal analysis with the BB60D in a congested environment makes easy work of identifying targeted weak signals in the presence of strong nearby signals. The increased selectivity and the improved dynamic range make the BB60D an outstanding tool for spectrum analysis and RF recording. Hello and welcome to Talking RF. Sean here with Justin Crooks, Senior RF Engineer and Hardware Designer for all SignalHounds products. Today we're talking about the BB60D, one of our flagship spectrum analyzers. The BB60D has all the features customers love in its predecessor, the BB60C, plus it embodies two major customer requests. You spoke and we listened. We've added a fully integrated 130 megahertz to six gigahertz sub-octave pre-selector to the BB60D, and we've carefully reworked each stage in the signal chain to reach a full 10 dB more of dynamic range in an instrument that has the same size and weight and power as its predecessor. So Justin, now that I've introduced the BB60D and the differences between the BB60D and the BB60C, can you tell us a little bit about the BB60D and you know how we how it came about, um, where where it originated from, and 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 what it is exactly? Um, yeah, so the BB60D, uh, like you covered in the intro, uh, nine kilohertz to six gigahertz uh, spectrum analyzer with built-in preselector. Um, it originated, basically our, our BB60C was very popular. And um, as the designer, there were a few things, a few shortcomings it had that I really wanted to address. So over the years, you know, we kept a running list and decided just to tackle them all at once. So we improved the dynamic range, we improved the shielding considerably. So the spurious is much lower. Uh, we added the pre-selector, so now you can uh, you know, it's an even better tool if you're trying to like measure the harmonics of, uh, of your signal. Um, basically just everything I wanted to put in the BB60C, uh, I finally got a chance to. Can you talk a little bit more in depth about the process that you went through, like the actual like architecture and, and how you dove into like what the SA44 was and how that turned into the BB60D? Um, yeah, so the SA44, uh, we wanted to keep it very affordable. So it actually doesn't even have hardware uh, image rejection. Uh, we do, we have a software uh, algorithm that provides that function and does it well in many cases, does it poorly in some cases. Uh, with the BB60, we wanted true, you know, hardware based image rejection. And we decided to go with a double conversion superhead design. Uh, basically, that means all frequencies get mixed to an intermediate frequency, filtered, and then mixed to another intermediate frequency before they get digitized. Um, that architecture is, is actually great for a general purpose spectrum analyzer. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons that the BB60 line has been so popular is because it is a true double conversion super hat uh, uh, design and offers all of the advantages of the incredibly good image rejection uh, that you just don't get in other types of systems. What makes the BB60D special compared to competing products? Sure, I mean, there's a lot of six gigahertz portable analyzers now. You know, we were kind of front runners in that, in that category, but since then, a number of companies have come out with a six gigahertz, you know, USB powered spectrum analyzer. Uh, but as far as I know, the BB60D uh, is the only one that has a built-in preselector. Um, and that offers some tremendous advantages when you're doing, uh, you know, RF survey work, looking for, uh, you know, spurious emissions off, off your signal or, um, you know, doing harmonic type measurements. Uh, that preselector serves a valuable function. Why is the BB60D so efficient and accurate when targeting weak signals in a congested environment? With the BB60D, we, we did add a dynamic range compared to the BB60C quite a bit. Um, and what that means is, you know, if there is a strong signal in the band that you're trying to analyze, uh, you can now see much weaker signals uh, nearby. You know, you know, for example, if you had a minus 20 dBm signal in the band and you were trying to, to take measurements on a minus 70 dBm signal nearby, uh, you really need that extra dynamic range. Um, 
And also with the pre-selector, um, let's say you have a, a wideband antenna and you're trying to, um, for example, maybe you're looking at something, let's just say around 170 megahertz or something. Um, if you're in a, an area with a lot of radio stations, all of those uh, frequencies, um, when they hit any nonlinear device, whether it's an amplifier or a mixer, are going to generate harmonics. And if you're trying to analyze something where basically any sum or difference of any other two signals in the environment uh, land on the signal you're trying to look at, it's, it's just going to be garbage. Uh, that that pre-selector basically removes that before it gets amplified or mixed so that you can actually see what's happening in that patch of spectrum that you're interested in. And uh, can you talk about the complexity of the architecture? What makes the BB60D so powerful? You know, it's a true double conversion superhead architecture. Um, you know, we mix low, frequency, low frequencies up to an IF of, I think, 2.38 gigahertz. And some of the high frequencies will mix down to a second IF, or a second frequency, first IF, around 1.2 gigahertz. Um, and basically all of the frequencies up through 6 gigahertz go into one of those two IF bands, uh, which then gets down converted to 140 megahertz, uh, which we then uh, pass through a, a series of uh, uh, saw bandpass filters and then digitize. Um, so super traditional architecture for a spectrum analyzer. Um, and the reason it's traditional is because it, it works. It, it's the best architecture I'm aware of for, uh, you know, just best possible image rejection. Um, uh, some of the tricks keeping the dynamic range good through the system is, was, is a challenge and a challenge that maybe I didn't do as well as I should have on the BB60C. Uh, really tightened that up on the BB60D and squeezed out as much dynamic range as I possibly could for that 6 watt power budget. Well, thanks, Justin, for joining us talking about the BB60D. I think it was very informative and I really appreciate your time today. If you have any questions for Justin, leave them in the comments section below or tell us what you think of the video. If you'd like to know any more, just ask a question. We'll get back to you. Like, follow, and subscribe for more Signal Hound and RF content.